Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter. And I thought I'd turn the camera on today and do a little bit of a project with you that I was going to do anyway. So, um, something I do is when I actually send out an order or I send someone a present or I send someone a gift or just basically send anything out, I'll sometimes include things like... Um, I'll include a tag that I've made or maybe I'll include a journal card or just just a little something, maybe like a postcard. So something that's just basically handmade uniquely by me and it's just a way of saying thank you in a unique way. And hopefully that person will either keep it in their stash, put it on the fridge or hopefully it doesn't go in the bin, but that, that's up to them entirely. So I thought I'm running low on those supplies, so I'm going to bring you along. It's a bit of a bit of a scrap buster anyway. So I've been through my um, snippet box or my scrap box and I pulled out just some generic pattern type stuff. Now, I'm not going in with any specific color scheme. I've just pulled out um, pieces. Some of these were off cuts from six by sixes, um, some were eight by eights. They, there were things for other projects. So I put those to one side a second. So that's what I'm going to use. And then what I do is I buy these. Now these are 50 postcard blanks. You can get them on eBay, get them on the internet quite cheaply. You can pick them up in the stationery shop. And once you calculate how much you've paid divided by 50, it works out to just a couple of pence. And they're good solid card. And the reason I like using these is because sometimes, in, especially in this day and age, I'll just mail a card and therefore they get a unique postcard through the post with me maybe just saying just thinking of you so i'm going to take these this is what i use and i will just lay them out um, as many as i want and let's just do let's do six of them today so i don't want to go wild because it could take a little bit of time otherwise i don't want the video to be that long but i always have these as a stash they're a great way of using up scrap as i said now um, I lay them out. The next thing I'm obviously going to do is collage on them. So I need a, a glue book. I need a glue stick. I'm using a smoother and I've got my tear ruler just in case I don't like the edges on them. But in saying that, I don't actually worry whether they're straight edges, whether they're torn edges, whatever. It's just, is it a nice edge is what I'm looking for. So the first thing I do is I will pull out pieces. Now, I'm not going to think about this. And that's the secret to doing these is I don't think. I just get the stuff down and get it on there. Um, so I'll come in and I'll usually, now I don't want the postcards touching because I know that I'm going to have to cut them and I'd rather cut them with a little bit of a gap. So I come through and I'll just attach one to the other. Now it's a water-based glue, glue sticks, so it means that if I do want to um, put this on and I get it on my mat, I can easily take it off again. Just take these off here. Um, this works great, by the way. You can do this with napkin, you can do it with tissue, um, postage stamps, any bits of scraps you're never really sure of, digitals, whatever's to hand, just plain book pages sometimes is something I'll reach for because I'm, all I'm doing is actually creating a background. And once they're created, I'll actually then go in and create a front for them, a focal point, which I'll also do in this video as well, just so that I'm sharing the whole process. So, there you go. Oh, that's not the straightest thing in the world, is it, Griffiths? That's the joy of a glue stick. Things will slide. There you go, I like that. Um, let's see, so glorious weather here, absolutely. We are officially having a heat wave, I think. It's, it's, it's super hot here. Um, I was around a friend's house this morning. I took some stuff around for her and I didn't go into the house. We were just talking outside the house and I looked down and I went, why is my arm pink? And then I realised, actually I'm getting burnt in the sun here. So I didn't realise it was that warm. So, yeah, lovely though. It's It feels like summer. We don't have great summers here in Britain. Sometimes we do, but not always. So I've done them that way. I'm now going to do them this way as well. Just see, there's a bit of a digital and I'll use that bit of the digital on here. But I do want to take that white bit off. So 
So yes, everyone's enjoying a little more freedom. Um, everyone's out enjoying the sun, hopefully. Actually, I'll put that one on as a join. Yes, I will. So sorry, talking to myself, which I have a habit of doing. So there you go. So everything feels like it's almost back to normal now. Although I'm hoping that we're not just being too optimistic and things aren't going to change for the worse. But anyway, I don't really want to harp on about that. That's just I'm getting a bit tired of how the whole virus thing has dominated our lives for so long now. And it is it is quite a long time. It is a long time. So I'm just tidying up the edges. I'm re-tearing this just so that the white edge isn't on there. It's on the scrap that I've actually cut off. So if you're hearing voices in the background, by the way, my neighbour has got a little, a little, I'd say probably about a two or three year old and she's playing in the garden. So that's my view today. That's not a bad view, I feel. So let's put that up there. So as you can see, I'm basically just stitching them all together. So I end up with one big piece and then I will just go all over the top. Now you could... You could absolutely um, butt them up against each other and glue straight over them and make a big board out of them and cut them. The only thing is I've found if I leave a little bit of a gap um, in between, I have a better chance of trimming them accurately. Whereas if I've got them butted up against each other, if I'm trying to do it with the scissors especially, I... I tend to go a bit of a skew, and sometimes I'm not the best person in the world with a trimmer either. So you have to know what your strengths and your weaknesses are, and my weaknesses are cutting things. So there you go. I think I'll leave that bit as it is, actually. Um, what else is going on? No, not really a lot, to be honest. It's just, it's the same old, same old. Um, it's summer in the UK. People are out there. It does make me smile. I mean, the Brits are not known for their um, their darker complexion, should we say? So, of course, everybody's out there, and what's happening? Everyone's turning into lobsters. They're all being burned to death. So I was like, you know what? You're a fool. And um, I say that as someone who's pasty white and tries to avoid the sun at most occasions. I've never really seen the point of sunbathing. Um, I just don't get it. You 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 sunbathe, so you lay in the sun, usually in your own perspiration, not the most attractive thought in the world. You turn red, you turn brown, and then a couple of weeks later, you're back to where you start again, because you're white again. So I, I've never really understood that. It could also be that I was raised in New Zealand and I lived in Australia for part of my life. And it's very, very much promoted there, um, looking after your skin from skin cancer. So I think that's pretty much where that sort of thinking has come from. Um, yeah, I think it probably is. Um, these pieces, by the way, are going in a box over there and they'll be used for something later on. Right, let's see if I can find something a little more patterned that I like the look of. I don't mind it going across all the way because the thing is of course it's going to be this is going to be cut into the postcard pieces. Now this is actually a bit of craft card so I'm going to make sure I've got a good amount of glue stick on here. Now if you're someone who sews after you've done this you could go around with a sewing machine and actually sew it all together around the edge of each postcard after you cut them. Um, I sometimes do that. It depends on what the feature is on the front. Um, if I think it merits the look of something a little more vintage, I'll do it, but I can't say I always do it. So let's pop you in by there. There you go. Now, the trick to this, by the way, is don't think. Okay, just do not think about it. Just get it on the page. Like stuff like this, I will tear this, but then what I'll do is, because I don't bother about the straight edges, I'll put them where it overlaps stuff. So I'm going to put this piece to one side and it will become what I call a top layer. Let's have a look at his stash again. Well, there you go. That's part of one of my digitals. 
Okay, I wonder where I can get that. I can put that on there. So, yeah, it's a great way of using up the little bits. And we all buy those, is it six by six or four by fours? I always get this wrong. Um, those little multi pads of craft paper. And we always love them. We buy them, we put them in our stash, and then we forget we've got them and then we don't use them. This is a perfect way of using those or using off cuts of them, which is what I tend to use a lot of. Um, you'll see a lot of mine are actually strips. That's not on purpose. It's obviously I must have trimmed it down for a journal card or um, a tablet for the inside of one of the journals or a bit of ephemera. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't I don't worry about the shapes of them. If there is one thing I do consider, because some of these are different thicknesses, like that is thicker than that. Now, if I was to overlap a thinner onto a thicker, I would have a ridge. So if I know the thicker pieces, I will butt up. So say I've got, what is this? Oh, let's take it, okay. If I was to glue that over there, I would guarantee I'd have a line there. But if I glue it so it butts up against it, I don't have a line there. And as I've got this in my hand, why don't I just stick this on? So there's just things like that to consider when you're doing collage work. So I'll just stick that up there. So I might move it over there so it's not all lined up. As I said, once this is finished and dry, um, I'll then cut them and then I'll look at maybe putting a plaque or I'll put an element on there. I'll, I'll look at something that will go on there. Well, that's nice. Um, that was that was just stamping onto a bit of cardstock with one of my stamps. I was trying to make a feather background. Um, hopefully this glue book is in shot. And if it isn't, you know, I'm sure you know what gluing looks like. I can't imagine it's going to be the end of the world if you don't see me rubbing a glue stick onto something. Hopefully I haven't gone too high, however, but there you go. So that's another piece on there. Um, all of these seem to be real quite heavily patterned. I thought I pulled out some, there you go, I did pull out some lesser pattern stuff. There you go. So what else is going on? Um, I don't really watch I don't really watch the news a lot so I, I'm sorely lacking in knowing what's going on with world affairs and I don't think that's a bad thing to be honest because goodness knows I just maybe sometimes I don't want to know what's going on in the world so that may seem a little ignorant of me but I honestly don't feel I can affect or influence much in the world um, I don't really trust politicians so and that's that's my personal opinion um, I feel that politicians basically tell you what they know you want to hear to get into a position of power and then they end up doing what the hell they want anyway so um, yeah a bit of a narrow-minded view of mine I'm sure most will consider that to be so but it just I don't know I've I don't know and I don't know why I brought the subject up to be honest with you because I try not to talk about politics or religion as they say not to. Um, now this is really an old piece of paper so I'm going to make sure I've got a clue, um, a clean glue page to start with or it's going to stick more to the glue page than it will anything else and it will just rip off. So let's see where can I pop this. Um, put the long there. So, let's see what else is I going to do. Um, pink. Should I have some pink on there? Maybe I have some pink on there. Hmm. Maybe up there. As I said, I'm not worried, guys. I'm not wondering what's, what's what. I'm just putting it down on the page. And that's why this is such a good scrap busting exercise. Because you don't have to worry about it. You just have to put it down. Now that little bit there doesn't bother me. Because as I said. There's going to be strips of stuff. I might even put some washi on this at the end. Just to finish it off. I'll grab the washi in a little while maybe. Um, little scraps like this. I mean that, that's perfect for the edge of something. I might put that on. Put that over there. I might put that on later. Where are we up to? Oh that's a nice piece. That's pretty bit. 
Um, actually, I might tear that in half because that's that's quite a chunk of a piece. So let's just find a home for it. It's Sunday here. I believe it's Sunday. Yes, it is Sunday here. So currently I've got a chicken in the oven. I'm going to do a Sunday lunch for us today. I, I tend to be the cook in the house because I used to be a chef. So it sort of always fell to me to be the one that really put the meals together. Um, and that's fine. I, I really enjoy cooking, but it's only my sister and I left now in the house. So I... And because we both lead our own sort of individual lives, I tend to forget that um, I don't tend to cook big enough meals. Do I tend to just cook? I cook for one or I just I'll, I'll do a snack instead of a whole meal. So not not the best way of doing that, I'm sure. But that's that's just the way things have evolved. But occasionally I'll go right. OK, I'm going to do a full Sunday lunch for us. So. Vegetables, roast chicken, um, roast potatoes, um, all of that stuff. We're just going to have fun with it. So, nice bit of gravy over the top. I do apologise if there's a vegan or a vegetarian. I do not mean to offend you. Um, it's just my choice to eat, eat meat. Um, I did try to be a vegetarian for a really long time when I lived in Australia because I was actually living with a vegetarian, it made me incredibly ill. Now, that was probably me doing something wrong, but to be honest with you, my digestive system does not like vegetarian only. I love vegetables, I love fruit, and I just I just absolutely had to have um, some form of protein in my diet. I do tend to pretty much only eat chicken. I don't really eat red meat, and... I think that's because I'm a bit phobic about blood. Um, my mother always used to laugh at me because if we went shopping and she went to the butchers, um, I wouldn't go into the butchers. I would stand outside. And if I was sent round to our family butchers on my own, I wouldn't go unless I had exactly the right money because I wouldn't accept change back from the butcher. Yeah. Curious kid. Yeah, that's me. Um, so that was the sort of stuff my mother had to put up with from me. Bless her cotton stocks. So, right, little pieces will fill in the gaps now. Let's take that off there. Where can this go? There's a nice little gap there. So you get the idea, basically. I mean, as I said, this is just something I do. When my scraps have got too big, I'm like, OK, we need to do something about this, people. And I will literally just spend maybe a morning. This glue stick feels like it's run out. It has run out. Um, I'll spend a morning and make maybe 10 or 20 of these. I won't even decorate them. I'll just do them and I'll cut round them and I'll just put them into a box or something. And then when I'm ready to send one out, I'll go, OK, what's on the go at the moment? Because sometimes... Um, if I'm sending a journal out to someone or it's someone's birthday or it's if it's something that is an event, I will try to match what I'm sending out to be part of that type of ephemera, if that all makes sense for everyone. So which I'm sure it does. I'll just put this on. And feel free if you you're getting bored of seeing me collage, please fast forward. I would not want to subject anyone to anything untoward. I don't want this video to be very, very long anyway. But I'm kind of getting there with that. I do have these strips. Now, these strips are actually um, part of one of my digitals in my Etsy store. Um, I've got several kits that I've got that are basically digital download trims. Um, and I use them a lot. I mean, you may have seen them if you're one of my subscribers. Um, I like to print them onto label paper, full-size label paper. I then cut them with the trimmer, and it's almost like having my own sort of washi. So let's put this one over here. Now, one thing I am conscious is I've put that there, so I won't put anything too close to it, 
because it will be on the same card. That's, that's another thing I'm sort of conscious of when I'm doing this. I've got another piece there. Let's put that over there. But, but you can literally use anything on this. I could have used napkins. I could have used um, tissue paper. I could have used digitals. I could have whatever I wanted or whatever you want. Right, coming up to the last few places now. And then, as I said, I'll use those more fragile book pages just to go over the odd piece here or there. Now, what I tend to do with this is um, I will make the piece that goes on the front for the focal point to be on. I usually make that a plain piece of paper. So that's why I'm not worried if this is looking too busy, because in the long run, it won't matter. It, it, it is literally a background. Oh, there you go. There's Biscuit. Why is it whenever I film, Biscuit feels that he has to announce himself? So <laughs> that's my sister trying to keep him quiet in the garden because she knows I'm filming. So Biscuit is a yellow lab. Um, Oh, I don't know how old Biscuit is. He's got to be about six or seven years old. Absolutely adorable, most wonderful natured Labrador I've ever known. He's so good. My sister runs a dog boarding business here at home. And I don't think I've ever known him um, to be protective or nasty to anyone else's dog who stayed here. He's just so... He just is so accepting and so lovable. It's just, I don't know what I'd do if there wasn't dot, wasn't animals in the world, to be honest, because I just love them. I'm just, I'm very much an animal person. I mean, if I had to go into a room full of animals and a room full of people, I'd probably go straight in with the animals. So not that I'm antisocial. I just, I don't know. I think it's that whole unconditional acceptance, love, whatever you wish to call it. And I, I, Sometimes I'll come home from a very hard day or I've been traveling back from, say I've traveled back from America and I've been there for a while and he greets me at the door and his ears are all perky and he's, we could say he's smiling because he's got this funny way of crunching up his muzzle um, and he does that and it really does look like he's smiling or laughing at you and it, it really brings a lump to my throat when I come home and I'm like, you know, that's such a nice welcome, sir. I might put the whole piece on there. Did I fold it over? I did. Um, it's just so lovely to come home to that. So, and sometimes, I mean, dogs, dogs know stuff. I mean, I swear they've got a sixth sense because sometimes if you're not well or if you're having a bad day, they'll just come and curl up next to you, uh, put their head in your lap and, and the world is okay with them. They, they don't care. They're not going to judge. They're not going to say anything whatsoever to you. It's just the way it is. And I love that about animals. So I do have a funky thing. Oh, what's the tear on the floor? I do have a funky thing, though. Um, and that is, if I go to, say I go to a zoo, or I go to a wildlife park, or anywhere, animals are attracted to me. It's... It's so curious. They they just they will come over and see me. They they will total total random animals. I'm like, okay, I'm a bit scared at this moment. I've got a gorilla homing in on me. But it they they just I don't know what it is. I do not know what it is. But I love the fact that they do it, mind you, but I mean I just seem to be a magnet for for animals. And I love that. So it's so nice. Unless, of course, they're going to eat me, and I don't think that's very attractive. Right, that's the last little bit on there. Now, I'm actually going to put you on pause a second, because what I want to do is I want to tidy up a little bit, but I do want to allow this to have a little bit of time to dry. I also then want to get my um, washies out, just in case there's a washi I want to add to this. So I'll see you in a second, guys. Right, here we are back again, pulled all the washes out, had a bit of a tidy up of the workplace. Um, I'm wondering whether I want to use something vintage-y for this, um, but I'm unsure. 
or do I want to go colourful and maybe have a bit of metallic in it because it is a gift for someone. Um, these, by the way, are my washi storage tech rings. Uh, there is a video on my website of me actually doing a bit of a review. So if you look at product reviews, you'll, you'll find them on there. I am finding that they work for me. Actually, I might put some butterflies on here, to be honest. Um, actually, I won't put butterflies on there because I don't know what the final element is going to be. Let's see if I can pull. There's some genetic, generic, I can't speak, some generic patterns. I might leave the shiny ones to the top as well. So let's have a look. What colours have we got in there? We've got blues. So I've obviously got blues, but do I want darker blues? So I'm leaning towards a bit of green, to be honest, because I don't see green in there. Right, now, um, the way I work is when I'm using washi, I don't trust washi. I mean, washi is by nature meant to be a removable tape. So I will run, run a bit of Pritt stick over it or glue stick just to make sure it sticks to my piece of work. Um, I don't think I'm the only one who doesn't trust washi in the world. So I do love washi though. Absolutely adore using washi. So, right. And I will, because it's this color, I'm going to put it over areas that I think will benefit from a little bit of breaking up. Now, those who know me know I usually do things in threes, so I'm going to grab three lengths of this and put it randomly around this hole. I suppose you could call it a collage board, really, couldn't you? I mean, some, some would call it a collage board. Um, not sure I would, but probably just call it a collage spread, to be honest, but that's just... Because that's what I always call these sort of things. Which is a piece down there that's just crying out for a little bit of something. Um, if you have watched my product review on these um, washi tape storage rings, I am enjoying them. And I am finding they do work because, as you can see, I don't have to take the washi tape off the, off the ring to actually use it. Right. Let's see what else needs to be in here. There's quite a lot of this colour, so I'm thinking no. Part of me likes the dots, but we're not going there because that's too much. Um, I'm thinking the wider ones are possibly too wide. Is there too much pink on there already? There might be. Um, I'm looking at that thinking, do I want that? I don't want that. Grey. No, I've got squares already. Let's look at something else. Right, we're looking at elements we're adding to this. So, um, all of my washes, by the way, were bought on the internet. So, if you're going to ask me, I wouldn't bother because I couldn't tell you. Uh, a lot of them come from Etsy because I do shop Etsy a lot. Um, although I equally shop Amazon a lot as well. So, uh, do I shop eBay? I do occasionally. But it's got to be something I'm really looking for. I don't know why. I've just, I've always been a guy who deals with Amazon. So I just, I always, my first port of call is Amazon. Um, so there you go. So, yes, I do quite like a little bit of, a little bit of shine on that, actually. As I said, I'm going to put three pieces of this on here. Now, we may come back to using washi once we've actually cut this up because then I will know where things will be needed. Like, I mean, I could use numbers, I could use music, I could use butterflies, I could, there's lots of different things that washi will give me detail without adding too much weight. Not that mailing a postcard is gonna cost you much at all anyway, because of the nature of it is just a postcard. I think that's there. I think that's enough of that one. And talking about numbers and stuff, let's see what we have in that category. I'll go back to this one. See, I've got music there, which I like music. I probably need to buy another one of those. Or numbers. I might put some music on here. I wish I had wider music, actually. I don't have wider. What's that one? Let's see what that one looks like. I don't think I've used that one yet. That's over there. It's it's um 
it's a washing with things like love and romance and roses and and it's chocolate coloured. I think it must have come as part of another set of washies. Oh, it's got love written all the way through it. Okay, I could do that. Because love can be on several different layers or levels. And it doesn't always have to be romantic love. I mean, friendship, family, all of that's love in my book. Let's put one up there. Actually, if I put three pieces on here, then that means it should appear on every single postcard oh, that I I cut up. So that might be a nice thing, actually. So I've got too much glue on my fingers. It's sticking to me. Right, let's put um, that across there, actually. Um, if you're going to ask, by the way, what my reasoning is behind sticking things where I stick them, I don't know. I, I absolutely collage by gut instinct. Um, I think once you've seen enough people collage or you've collaged enough yourself, you tend to build up um, almost an instinct for it. Uh, at least that's my belief anyway. It's, it's like you, you just know what you want to do. Okay, I think that's enough wash on there at the moment. I'm just going to have a little tidy up that book and get it out of the way. Get this out of the way because I want this all to pretty much take a few minutes just to dry off a bit before I try and cut it. So there you go. Now you could, absolutely you could, leave this as is and then when it comes to time to use it you can cut it then. But um, because I'm making a video, I'm going to go straight ahead and cut it. Now, you can use scissors, you can use a guillotine, you could use a craft knife and a metal ruler, whatever floats your boat. I'm just going to grab a pair of scissors and hopefully this is dried enough. Now, this is the reason I like the gap, because I can cut along the edge of the postcard itself and it also gives me an edge to rest the blade up against. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing more than say nine of these because then it gets a little bit unwieldy as far as um, handling the whole thing. Now you may think I'm being a bit unwieldy but I'm actually cutting everything looking through an iPad at the moment so it's it's not like I'm looking actually at the piece and of course you could use a trimmer or a guillotine I'm, I'm more of a guillotine person than a trimmer I don't get on with trimmers very well so I don't know why I just don't I'm not turning them over because that's part of the surprise is seeing what they look like when you actually turn them over. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut all these out, as you could obviously see I'm doing. I'm then going to turn them over so we can all see. Then I'm going to take a bit of a break because I want to sort through some of my ephemera um, embellishments just so I can see what is lying around. And then I'll come back and we'll decorate one or two of these. Or we might decorate all of them. Depends on depends on how much time I've got left in this video, to be honest. Now, if your postcards do curl a little, and sometimes card will curl if you actually um, use a wet glue on one side, I would just put a big book on top of these, and the big book, the weight of that will just flatten them all down again. So... Mind you, what, what the postman is going to do with them is probably worse than a little bit of a curl anyway. Unless they're going inside a parcel, of course. Um, if I'm sending out a journal to someone, this is the sort of thing I will tuck into the front cover pocket just as a bit of a thank you. So, And you do find a lot of people who collect journals like that sort of thing because it means that they know who made it. They also know when it was made 
and also by sending a little message or a thank you it just personalizes everything for them and I love that and I do the same when I actually buy journals from other people or people send me journals they they tend to do that right scissors down let's clear all of that to, to one side right the big reveal so let's have a look at these and then we'll take a pause and I'll sort out some embellishment so there you go I like that that's good and I got the love on every one of those actually which is the up okay that's the right way up because don't forget there is an up and a down and you need to remember that when it comes to decorating there is an up and a down right why are these two stuck together it's another one I like the way the butterfly fitted in there it's another one I like that's shoddy cutting on my behalf so another one now, once we put a flower or a butterfly or something or a bird on these, these will actually just be finished off beautifully. There you go. As I said, you could just sew around them with a sewing machine should, should you actually want to do that. So I'm going to leave those there for the moment. Um, I'm going to pause this video, dig through, pull out some of my embellishment, and then we'll get straight back into decorating some of these. So here I am back again, slightly different lighting scenario. Basically, the sun came in, the sun came out, the sun went in, the sun came out. Welcome to Britain. Okay, so um, we've got these, as I said, I would normally store these like this, undecorated, unfinished, and then decorate up when it comes to time and send them out. But that's not very good when it comes to making a video. So I just want to finish these off quickly and show you what we're going to do. I did bring in a few little pieces from my ephemera stash. Um, I've got two little tins of specimen labels from Tracy Fox. It's a digital download. I believe they're called Field Notes. She's got several labels. I tend to use generic labels and I avoid things like happy birthday, best wishes, all that, because it just needs to be, a, it's a little piece of art and that's the way I view it. Um, I've also pulled in my ephemera folder, which I need to have a really good sort out of. I do have quite a bit of fussy cutting to do that. It's just finding the time to fussy cut. So we've got that. Um, I also pulled in the Tim Holtz people, um, or paper dolls, I can't remember what, they, what they're really called. I can't imagine I'm going to be using any of these on there, but you never know, there may come the opportunity to use those. Um, obviously pulled in postage stamps, because I like using postage stamps, so if there's a colour scheme or something I think a stamp would look good on, I've got those to hand. And last but no means least is... Some of you may recognise these if you actually have watched another one of my videos where I recycle book pages and I do acrylic shapes onto them, uh, shapes and acrylic paint on them. And as you can see, I then rubber stamp on the top of them, draw a rough line around them. And I use these embellishments a lot and I like using these. Actually, that's a good example. Right, just, just in case you're wondering, the process is, and if I remember, I'll link the video to this. Um, in the description box. Description box is down there. There's a little grey V. Click on that and it'll open up. So this is acrylic paint onto an old book page and I've just finished it off like that with a rubber stamp in the middle. Now what I normally do, this is this is a number five marker. can be any size mark you want and what I'll do is I will just draw around the edge. Now I'm trying not to be the neatest person in the world and that's quite easy because when it comes to drawing a straight line, I'm not the best at drawing a straight line. But it does mean that this has got a rough border on it. And then when I use it, depending on the project I'm using it on, I might actually um, distress ink the edge, which maybe we'll do one or two of these if I use them. So that just gives me a little embellishment that's cost me nothing more than a little bit of time. And as I said, some of them really look really nice. I've just used black black ink to stamp with permanent ink archival so I've got these to hand as well let's put those over there actually because I'm really likely to use those so because I like them so much so right let's look at these what's the first thing I'll probably do first thing I'm probably going to do is I'm going to use some vintage photo and I'm going to distress the edges of this distressing is something it's a personal choice um, I do find however it does kind of frame frame the postcard or frame whatever I'm distressing and it's a quick little finish but it gives it a definite feel it's like um, 
if you sew, and I may well sew one or two of these at the end, just to show you how it changes the look of them. Um, I'll probably sew off camera so that you don't have to sit through watching the top of my sewing machine because I don't have the setup that actually allows me to do um, two angles for filming so I can't possibly have the camera pointing at the needle of the sewing machine and why would I because to be honest with you watching a needle going up and down sewing is probably going to be quite boring to watch. So let's just quickly whip around these. Now I'm using vintage photo you could use um, black, you could use pink, you could use brown, you could use coffee, you could use whichever colour you wish to use. Um, basically don't always think that distressing the edges has to be done in vintage photo. It doesn't. Oh, my sponge is beginning to shed. Looks like it's new, new sponge time soon. So let's quickly run that around there. Um, it's funny because I find working at speed helps me work better because if I take too long to do something I'll procrastinate and procrastinate and I'll never get anything done so which you've probably heard me say if you watch my Marguerite Miller collage challenges I'm doing weekly what day is it today yeah one goes out tomorrow actually I think so another beautiful day here um, well, it is now. It wasn't a little earlier, but there you go. It is now. Right, that's those done. Just clear that away from here. So let's choose one of these at random. So let's have a look. I'm not sure I'm going to decorate all of them, but let's choose that one. Okay, there you go. One with the butterfly. Let's put those up there. So um, butterfly immediately says to me a flower. Now, if I was going to put a flower on that, I quite like the look of that because there's blue there. Um, what else could I add? Let's have a look at ephemera here. Um, don't want to add a butterfly, there's already a butterfly. Although if I wanted to add a butterfly, I could do something like that, which would balance the butterflies out. So let's leave that sat on there just in case that's what we end up going with. Actually, there's another one there. I think that one's probably a bit too big. Yeah, I like how that pulls the purple out of that design, and I don't mind that. I don't really like to stick things right in the middle. Don't know why. It just it's an odd thing. I know. Um, I'm flicking through this over here, by the way, because if I try and bring it in, I'm not sure how much you'd be able to see. Let's see if I can do this. Um, I could pull in one of these sort of things, which is torn from a botanical book. I'm not sure I want to do that. Um, it's just reminding myself of what's in here to be honest with you. Lots of things like these are just snippets off old books where I've used the pages and decided, actually let's put a little ticket in there, that would be quite nice. I'll put a ticket on there as well. Um, I shall put the ticket up in that corner, that might balance it. I think that's probably going to be it for that one. So let's do a bit of gluing down and then we can move on to the next one. Right, okay. Do I want to distress this? I think I do. Um, now it's quite tricky distressing old book page. So be really gentle. There is a way, I can't remember who did it first. Um, you can put a bit of card behind it just so you don't tear it, but I'm quite used to doing this. So. Um, I very rarely tear anything when I'm distressing the edges, but I do tend to tear stuff when I'm actually um, either cutting them out or gluing them. So now I know this is already brown, but this will just frame that off slightly. So, right, let me just lay this down to have one more look. I did like that there. I do like the blue there. It was the ticket that was bothering me. Do I move it? Actually, a cluster of three might be quite cute. What if I slip that under there? No, maybe not. My instinct was to put it up there, and I think I'm going to stick with my instinct. So I'm just going to pull my Pritt stick out and stick these down. Now remember, these these can be used for anything. I'm going to mail mail them um, when I send a thank you out to someone. There. If I was going to put fabric on these, which I very rarely do, because I could mail this directly as is through the post, just putting a stamp on the other side and addressing it. However, when it comes to something that's got fabric on it, that would probably be a really bad idea because you have no idea 
what the postal system is going to do to your miniature piece of art. Although what I would say is you could always put it in an envelope and it's not going to weigh that much more if anything and it probably wouldn't alter the postage at all and it does mean that it's not likely to be damaged or damaged as much should I say. Right, is that central? Yep. So there you go that's one done and how quick was that? I quite like that pop of blue looking at it I might do something on it later but actually I don't think I don't think of the current I want to so let's put that one up out of shot I'm not sure whether you're going to see that up there so let's choose another one at random now let's just choose that one okay now oh so I'm going to need to check yes I did do it the right way remember the orientation of the image needs to be right orientation of this one is right now we've done one in that direction let's see whether we can do one in this direction so already inked up, what do I want to put that on that? Let me have a quick think. Right, let's do something other than the uh, acrylic painted squares. Let's pull in, let's pull in a flower of some sort on this one. Um, what's the predominant color? Let's look at the purpley sort of range or the pink sort of range. That's reasonably nice. Um, Let's leave that sit there for a moment because otherwise I'll, I'll say oh, I like the other one then have to find it. I quite like that one because it pulls out the purple as well. I think everything else is getting a bit too light although sometimes just a bit of greenery like that is just nice. Let's put that on there. Let's put these back. My instinct was to pull out that purple colour or that purpley pink colour. I actually don't mind that and I think what I'm going to do then is pull in one of these Tracy Fox labels and find a label that will suit the purpose. I should quite like that one. Do I want to cluster them? Sometimes I like more than one label on there. No actually I think we're going to unless I put one of them across there to balance it. That might be nice. Right, there you go. Now, um, these labels I'm using are, as I said, from Tracy Fox. Um, if you're looking for Tracy Fox, uh, I buy them on Etsy and her business is called um, Love Junk Journals. So have a look for her favorite, her shop. She does some incredible incredible digitals. Um, she also has a really um, good Facebook group as well which I'm actually part of as well. So I'm terrible at peeling these labels off. Come on, you can do it. Um, and she's a very talented lady, let's put it that way. Why can I never get these labels off? Anyone else have these troubles? I'm sure you do. Right, peel that off there. Now I'm going to put some glue stick onto the back of this because I know in the past I've had labels peel off or peel up. So I'm just going to put a bit of glue stick on here just to secure it down. You don't have to, it's your choice entirely. I just feel that for my own peace of mind I don't want it arriving at the other end of whomever I'm posting it to only to find out that it's actually come off. Now another trick is if you take your vintage photo at this point and rub it slightly over the label, it'll knock back the paper that it's actually on, which means it'll actually look as if it's all one piece. Um, now, I printed these onto presentation paper, so it's a little firmer, but it means the colors are brighter, these labels from Tracy Fox. You don't need to at all, that's just my choice in this. Um, something that is really nice to do is if you print them on one sheet label paper and then all you need to do is literally just cut them out and take the back off the label and stick them directly on. So obviously that's not something I did. So that's just tool that there. I do want that there. So there you go, that's another one done. Actually, let's hold them each up so you can have a really close look. So that's the first one. That's the second one. I remember I'd had the orientation, so it doesn't matter when I go this way, which way it is, but that's the one I've chosen for that. 
Let's put that to one side. Let's get a clean book page or glue book. Right, let's just take the next one off the top of the pile. Okay. Um, if there's one thing that's bothering me about this, it's that that's on an ever so slight angle. And unfortunately, I'm OCD, so unfortunately that is bugging me. Right, it's in the right orientation, so I think I want to use something that's going to cover that up. Not that much, though. Um, actually, that's not bad. Let me keep on looking. I'll just have a little browse through. So, I quite like that as well, although that seems to take up the whole of the image. I don't mind that. That's cute. That sort of pulls in the colours from that. Um, as you can see, that's why I like these sort of things. I, I just use all of the acrylic paints I've got in my stash. So I've got a wide range of colours on there. Right. I'm going to bring in my um, Distress Ink and just catch the edges of this. Now, if you're someone who does watercolours, you could come in and watercolour um, the book page as well and paint in the details. Just be aware though, book pages are not really set up to be painted on. So if you do too much water on something, they could buckle or bubble. Um, alcohol inks is another one you could use, but be aware some alcohol inks will go straight through the page to whatever's underneath it or make it transparent. I didn't want it. I think that's due. So, right, so we've got a leaf, so we're looking sort of fallish in my mind. Um, do I want another label on there or I do want something different? Right, let's have a little look at, let's take the blue book out of the way, a little look at the stamps. Um, I'm trying to find three stamps that are sort of the same colour and the same size. Well that's where my brain is going anyway. Let's have a little bit of a look through here. Now, as I don't know where this is going, am I really bothered about colours or themes? No. Let's get, if I can get that stamp out, I'll probably use that one. There's one little stamp. I'll show them to you in a second, guys. I'm struggling with the stamp album. Come on out, you come. Do you know, I sometimes wonder whether I was made for crafting because my fingers are way too big for this. Let's see if I can pull it out with a little bit of a scissors. There you go. Right, there you go. Let's close the book up and show you what I pulled out. So I pulled out these three little stamps and they're all from the same country. They're all the same and I'm thinking about going one, two, three, right down there. And as I'm thinking about it, I'm going to do it. So just something really simple. I mean, it's just a postage stamp. Um, I'm not looking for something that's rocket science. I'm just looking for simple, quick finishes. It's not even a journal. Do you? It's not something I'm... It's a little something that I'm giving away for free. And, and it's a little work of art. Isn't that nice? So I want to... Hopefully those are straight. I work looking through my iPad screen, so I'm hoping they're actually all straight. So it's only when I pick them up afterwards to actually see. So there you go. Now a group of three is always more pleasing to the eye than a group of four, unless you put the group of four into a square. So there you go. I think that one's done. Do I want a label there? I'm, I'm looking at that space thinking I do want a label there. I don't want a huge one though. Let's just pull. I think that will be all right. I don't know what don't know what it says because it's it's a little bit small. So don't off you come. Now another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it across the image and the paper, and it'll sort of tie it all in together so it becomes one coherent piece. So there you go. That's that one done. So let's get a clean glue page. All glue pages go in the book box over there, and you'll see me do book page projects later on. Okay, this one, right? Which way up? We're up, we're up way. Um, do I fancy doing something different on this? Maybe I do. It's quite plain, and I'm liking that. So let's have a little look at. 
I said I wasn't going to use Tim Holtz people, but maybe there's a Tim Holtz little child or something I want to use. She's probably a bit too flouncy for me. Right, let's let's pull this in. Let's come up a little bit. All right, I need to get more of this. I didn't think I'd be using them as much as I did. I wonder how you look, young man. I'm thinking of having one that goes that orientation, but he's obviously too tall, so I'm looking for someone who's a little bit littler. If that is actually English at all. She's quite cute. No, not what I was thinking. Oh, now she's a bit special, isn't she? She's got a Sunday dress on, she has. Again, just my, I mean, I could go that way. I'm not, not keen on that one. Actually, this little boy looks quite cute. Let's go with the little boy. I've got an idea. I've used it before, but I'm going to use it again. So orientation is correct. Right, whenever I use something that's sitting, I need to find something for them to sit upon. Okay, so that's one thing to consider. And he sits on there quite nicely. Now, what I'm thinking is I'm thinking about giving him a set of wings. Yep, you heard right. He, this boy's going to have some wings. So let's move that up slightly. Hopefully still in shot. And let's bring out some butterfly wings to put behind him. That's actually not bad. I think the orange is a bit much. So let's see if there's another, another colour I prefer. Maybe those ones. I think we're going to use that one. I'll cut the antennae off because I don't need those. Or as my friend Gail will call them, antlers. So, yes, she knows that's wrong. Gail's a funny one, is that Gail? She's got a great sense of humour and I love her for it. So I'm just snipping those antennae off. So you nearly had me call them antlers then, Gail. Right, so it's about there. Actually, do you know what would be good? I will stick the wings to the little boy and then stick the entire little boy on. How about that? So I'm just going to pop the wings on. There you go. And that gives me a better way of actually sitting. And now he's sitting on there, so I need to remember that. Let's fold that over. And make sure the wings don't move around too much. I know I'm going to have to reposition the wings when I pick this up because they will have moved ever so slightly. There you go, my little friend. You can sit by there. Now, that makes him a little butterfly boy. Um, but what else would I like on there? Do I want a flower? Or do I want to keep it quite masculine and actually just put a label on there? Um, I'm liking that actually. I think we're just going to put some distress ink around that. And remember, these are meant to be quick little things that you do. And you could use a machine or cart in a journal by all means. I mean, I've, I've done that before now. When I've come to the end of a journal, I'm looking for some journaling space. And I'm like, right, I just need something in there. I've reached for these on more than one occasion. Let's smooth that down. Is that straight? It is. Okay, that's another one done. So let's put that to one side. Let's see. I wasn't intending on doing all of them, but there's only two left, so I'm sure we can do two more. Right, that's quite a plain one. That's the sort of thing I would like to do in that direction and possibly put a whole a whole piece on like this. That's obviously the wrong colour. Um, that's not too bad. Let's leave that one there a second. I really love this one, but it would take over the entire card. In fact, it's a card on its own. Um, I did like that, didn't I? And that actually might go quite nicely with the word love. Right, let's leave that up there. Let's do that. Um, something to pull that down a bit. Let's see if I've got a little red or pink label. I'm seeing one nurtured in there. That would work. Let's, and now... I've there are some really small labels in here, so I think I'm going to do a little bit of a cluster of them directly 
onto the bottom of this here. So let's just again come in with a little bit of vintage photo for me just to give it a bit of an outline. It will just help it stand out just slightly against, against that paler colour. Make sure I've got a clean blue page. Um, something else you can do if you've got like um, glitter pens or stickles or some sort of gel glue or gel pen that's actually got glitter in it, um, you could go in and put a little bit of glitter on the elements of this flower as well and bring that to life, whichever works best for you. Now I'm not going to um, distress ink these, I'm just going to stick these on. Sorry, just drop the glue stick. So just going to have a little bit of a random moment with these. Again, I'm doing the cluster of three, but I like things in threes. It, it sits visually very well with me. And I think that goes across there. Just give them a little bit of a smooth down to make sure they're fully in contact. There you go, and that's another one done. And let's pull the last one in. Oh, it's quite a busy one, isn't it? Right, where's the orientation? That way up. Right, quite a busy. Um, what haven't I used? We've got acrylics, we've got that, that. Right, so I think let's have a little bit of a look in the ephemera folder and go from the back to the front. As you can see, I've got more fussy cutting to do. Now, when I use my ephemera folder, um, very often I go to the front of the book, but then occasionally I go, right, let's look at the back, because I never get to the back without actually um, going through the front first, if that makes sense. Right, do I want something like... I'm not sure that calls to me, to be honest. Now, all these are, are bits of um, offcuts of coffee dyed paper that I've had. And I've actually just stamped on them. And it's a company called Mackey, M-A-K-I. -A 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 and they're based in Berlin. Um, or is it Belgium? It's something like that anyway. It's somewhere in Europe. And they do the stamps. And I love them. They're very, very detailed stamps. So, right. Let's see. Maybe just a big label. How would we fancy just a big label? Okay. Um, let's do a big label. Um... Do I want some other something on there? Maybe no, not that. Um, that's not sticking out enough for me. That's blending into the background. I'm thinking a bit of a flower, to be honest. Let's pull that round. I keep pulling this one flower out all the time. And maybe it's time it got used. Let's put him in there. Or her. Let's not be sexist about this. Right, now, to me, this is a little bit straight. So I'm just going to come in. I don't want that sharp of an edge. I don't mind actually just tearing my way through that a little bit. Just to get away from the uniformity of that straight line. Probably torn off a little more than I expected on the top of that flower, but you know what? It's been cropped. It's been pruned. So bring this along here. I'm not liking it now. Right, that's going to go over there. I've changed my mind on that one. I didn't like the fact that I just sliced the top of the flower off. It really bothered me. So let's go back in here again. Um, Actually, where were those two butterflies we looked at? Because maybe they would be a nice quick finish. Mm, maybe with a stamp. Maybe, maybe we'll put a postage stamp on. Right, I'm just going to put those, those on there. And then I'm going to look at the postage stamps because I think it's needing a little, a little pop of something colour-wise. So, and I'm thinking about pulling the purple up from there. So just put a little bit of distress around that. Uh, 
let's get him stuck down first. And I'm having that. Is that the right place for it? Actually, I'm thinking I want it up here now. See, this is what happens when I think. I shouldn't think. Stop me thinking. So, right. It's another one of those labels again, guys. I wish there was a quick and easy way of doing this. Or a gadget that was on the market that means you could just absolutely just peel these off. Okay, out you come. Lay that down. Don't stick it to the glue book. And I'm just going to put some glue on the back of this. And the good thing is that when you put Pritt stick onto the back of one of these labels, it it goes really soft and is easier to pick up and move around. So just line that up along the bottom there. Now remember the trick, a little circular motion over the top of this will just knock back the whiteness of the label so it blends into the background. Um, do I want, what do I want? Do I want a postage stamp? I'm looking at this thinking either there, but then I don't mind the word love, but I'm looking here going, that's a really, a really blank spot. Entomology is about insects. So why don't we just put a little entomology down there? Let's just put that on there. Let's pop him right in that corner. So there you go. Right, that's the six of them decorated. So let's have a little quick flick through and see what they look like. So that's the one we've just finished. That was the rose one. I'm quite liking this. He makes me smile. Another one. Now, I think this is where most people would normally stop. And sometimes this is where I stop. But I think, as I mentioned earlier on, I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to sew around these and then show them to you again. There are rubber stamps out there that mimic stamping. So if you put rubber stamp or clear stamp or silicone stamp um, into a search engine and look for sewing or stitching, you'll find them. And you can actually then put faux sewing around these. So it's fake. But you know what? It's another thing to look at, right? I'm going to go away and sew these and then I'll come back and then I'll show them to you one more time. Back in a second. So here you go, all finished. I used just um, either a zigzag or a plain stitch around each one of them. Um, you'll note that I actually think it adds another layer of visual texture to them. I really like the look of that. But then that's a personal choice, as I've said, and not everyone has a sewing machine. But you can get um, rubber stamps, I said, to actually do that for you. Now, that just leaves one more thing for me to do with each of these, which is something I believe that if you're someone who's a creator of any sort, you should do, and that is just to make sure that your name is on it. So I've got, I've got a little rubber stamp here that says Handmade by Kerry Griffiths, and I, I can't even remember where I got it from, and I like to put it by there next to the postage stamp. Now, it doesn't have to be a perfect... A perfect imprint it just needs to be something that says that it's mine so you can put the stamp wherever you wish I just for me that's where it works um, if you're a journaler I fully recommend that if you make journals for sale or journals for people um, somewhere inconspicuous towards the back of the book or back of the journal sorry I would say always sign and date your work it's really nice, especially if someone buys your journal and they're a collector of journals. And I do know there are some collectors of journals out there. Then they like to know who made the journal. I mean, I certainly do. So that's my name on the back of them, handmade by Kerry Griffiths. I mean, I could have signed them, but you've not seen my handwriting. So one more time, hopefully you've enjoyed these. So it gives you a bit of an idea. It's something that I do. I think it's really nice to send out with maybe an Etsy order or as a thank you for a party or something, anything along those lines. So that was a nice little tutorial from me. Well, I hope it was a nice little tutorial from me. Um, 
this is where you can find me if you want to find more of my things. I do have digital downloads in my shop. Facebook is there. I do do Instagram, although I don't do a lot of Instagram, which is why it's not on this. Um, there is a space here because I've got a website launching in a couple of weeks time and that will be there. And obviously you found YouTube because you're on it. Um, I'd love you to subscri subscribe. I'd love you to share. I'd love you to like. It would be great if I could reach a wider audience because I love what I do and it helps if I've support out there. So this is me saying goodbye. Goodbye, and it's goodbye from Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I, the Crafter. Bye-bye now.